Today we're going to use a Splunk add-on builder to build an API integration with finhub.io. It's a, an available, freely available API for, for stock data. Um, so we'll look at the Splunk stock today, but you can essentially use any ticker that you would be interested in, any symbol. So what we'll do is we'll go through, we'll set up the REST API integration, and then we'll do some field mapping. We'll correct the timestamp issues, and then we'll, we'll validate the app to make sure it's suitable for Splunk base. This gives you a, an orange tick on Splunk Base and helps users know that the app has been approved and tested to, to a certain standard. We'll also build a dashboard as an example of what you can do with the data once you've got it into Splunk. Okay, we're going to start to build an add-on now. So we click on the add-on. We give it a name. It's just an arbitrary name that suits us. Then we'll specify the author. That'll be me. We use the version here, we use the version control in the app, this is important for Splunk Base. Um, so we'll start at version 1, but you guys should add, uh, increment the version number as we go. A description is always good, explain what you're trying to achieve. So we're going to basically create an add-on to get data from FinHub. So include the icon and set the theme if you like. Then we click create. This will generate the folder within the add-on builder. Now we're going to conf configure some data collection. So there's nothing at the moment. We'll choose a new input and choose REST API. We're going to choose the source name. So this is again just sort of arbitrary as to what you would like. Um, we'll give a description again here to say we're going to collect the data from FinHub. The source name is going to be FinHub and the display name is going to be FinHub for this as well. We'll just specify it's JSON coming from there as the source type. You'll notice I've used a colon in the name there as well, that's uh, recommended for the add-on builder. We'll choose the input parameters of which we're going to have uh, for the input. So we'll choose some text. We're also going to have a password obviously or the API key in this case. The reason we choose two different things is the password uh, box is blanked out for, uh, for vis vis visibility within Splunk later on. So who are we going to say to insert the API key in the helper text. So this is going to pop up, you see it appearing underneath the input. You can have a default value here. Um, I'm going to have default text. If you have a value then it's actually text within the box which can confuse the user. But if you just have display text then that just appears as all greyed out in the background and when they start to type it's gone. So the symbol we're going to choose for the ticker. So which, which stock we want to follow. This is going to be uh, the, the stock in this case will We'll follow the uh, Splunk ticker. And then we'll set some parameters just to enable the proxy settings to be configurable by the user later on in case it ends up in an environment with a proxy. So here we're going to pop the URL in that we're going to hit. So that's finhub.io API v1. Now we're going to start to use some tokens. So these tokens are passed through um, from the configuration page into the URL. So when we set the token, you remember on the last page we used symbol, um, and then the token here will be uh, API key for the next one as well. The, the, the syntax for that is a dollar followed by a curly brace and then a closing curly brace on the end of your, your value, and then Splunk will pass whatever you've set in those values here. We'll set them at the bottom here. So at the moment we've got SPLK, and then we'll specify the API key in the bottom. So this is why we run the test button. So what's happened here is the stock is in lowercase. And what's happened there is it's not in a recognized stock. So by changing the symbol to a uppercase symbol, we've now returned the Splunk stock values here. We've got the fields and the dollar values of the stock. what we're going to do is we're just going to edit the input parameters here to make it easier for the user. So the symbol here in my example before was all lowercase, so we're going to change that to uppercase now. So now when everyone who uses the add-on will, will read the helper text, they'll see that it has to be in caps. So everyone learns from my mistake. We go through, we'll just test it again, and then we're, we'll finish. So this will save our settings as, as an input now. So we're done. The next step, um, just to go through, 
and uh, set up the system. So we're going to uh, actually have the add-on now within our Splunk system, so it's created the add-on. And this is what the UI looks like now we've created the inputs. So there aren't any inputs here. So we'll go up to the top right and create a new input. And what this does is uh, it just gives you the arbitrary name and the interval. So obviously be kind to the people whose APIs you are using. Uh, which index you want it to go to. And you'll see the, the grey text at the back there is Splunk and then the API key again. So these are the two fields that we added in the add-on builder. They're now visible in the UI. Then we do add. It's going to save that and uh, show us that it's available now. So if we go into configuration we have the option for proxy. So this is where I was saying before if the add-on does end up in an environment where it needs a proxy to get out it's much easier for the user to have that enabled. So we just run a run a search now just to see if we've got some data from that uh, API call. So index equals main because we chose the default and this is what our data looks like in Splunk. So really we could use this now um, if we wanted to, we could use these values and kind of do some charting and some um, statistics on these on these values. Um, but we want to try and make it uh, probably a bit easier to use. So we've got the uh, just some let single letters essentially to show us what these values are. If we look at the documentation on FinHub.io, it tells us actually that the lowercase l means low price. So to make it easier for the user in the end who's going to use this, we'll go back into the add-on builder and we're going to do some field aliasing essentially in the data. So um, one of the magical things about Splunk is schema at search time, not at ingestion. So we can add a field dynamically as we need to. So it's showing at the moment as unparsed data. So we're going to change that. We're going to select that to be JSON. And then in the background, the add-on builder will do some magic to format the text and tell Splunk it's JSON on the back. So we'll just save that. Now it shows it's gone from unparsed data to JSON. So now we're going to map some fields. So in here we're going to create an event, um, an event type. So we're going to call it the FinHub event type, just to get that set up. We're going to choose the source type, which is what we specified in the add-on builder. And then here now we've got our fields. So we're going to create an object, which is a field alias. We're going to choose on the left the field that we want to map. And if we go back to our documentation, C is current price. So we're going to take that value and we're going to map that now across into our own field. My personal preference is to always use lowercase because it makes it easier uh, later on. So we've got current price and we'll choose H. Okay, we'll map another field alias. So we'll pick the H. Go back to this, the documentation. H is for high price. So we'll take that value, we'll put that into the field. And again, these fields are going to be generated as we search the data, so it doesn't change the ingestion. It just gives the end user a, uh, a human readable value for what those things are without having to go away and look them up. So for I, oh sorry, lowercase l, sorry, we will choose from the FinHub docs, that will be the low price of the day. You can essentially do this as many times as you want to. We've got four or five fields in the data here, but if you had a, a larger model you could use the same technique to map any of your own models. This can be used as well if you've got internal field names that you use, you can map it uh, internally. So O for the opening price. So these fields are logical, but if you were to pick up this add-on from scratch and maybe wouldn't know what they were, this just saves the next thousand people that use the add-on this work. So again, just the last field alias now for PC, previous close. Okay, and I just prefer the lower case there, so previous close. And then click on OK. No. So that's that mapping is done. So we do done in the top right now. And we'll see that we've got the FinHub source type and the events there. So if we run the search again, so these are the same events we had before, but because Splunk schema at read, it will pick up the current price. So those two values will be the same. So C and current price will be the same values. 
um, but you can use these things in tables and graphs much easier. I say much more logical for the end user if you're trying to represent something to them. So if you want to see this value over time, we can map that in. Um, so there's only a couple of events here, so the, the graph isn't particularly full, but over time this would fill out um, with, with the values and track them over time. Okay, my, my personal preference is just um, to change the, the axes here just to have no values on them, just to remove the underscore time and the highlights on the side. It gives a bit more visibility to the graph and also just moving the uh, legend to the bottom just to spread the graph out. If you put it into a dashboard it just makes it a bit easier. We can do a quick alias as well here. So rename it as current price because we've got that underscore again if you're just building this into a dashboard for an end user just having human friendly names and thinking of your future self so we can save as dashboard panel in the top right which we'll is a new dashboard we'll call it stock prices okay, and give it a description so that people know what it's for my favorite stocks in this case I'll share it with my friends and colleagues and I'll give this panel a title as Splunk. So the dashboard is called Stock Prices and this particular panel is Splunk's current price. So over, over time, as I say, this panel will fill out. You could essentially do this for each of your favorite stocks or the one you're interested in and then each have a, a time chart across there for each of them. If you wanted to uh, put it in dark mode, then you can change the toggle at the top here. You can also add an input for time. So if I wanted to look at different times here, maybe compare times this time versus last week, um, or look over a week period rather than um, a day period. I choose from here, so I'm going to choose the shared time picker because that actually is in the top left here. Click apply and then save. And what that's done is that's tied my panel to that time picker and also switched Splunk to dark mode now. So on the left hand side, if I change this time picker, if I choose the last seven days, the graph will redraw. Obviously, no data yet because we've only just created the input and the last 60 minutes actually shows over time what this looks like. Again, you could use a line graph here or something or an area chart if you wanted to do something uh, different. There's also lots of other, visi um, other visualizations available on Splunk Base if you wanted. So here we're going to have a look at changing the timestamp. So what Splunk's doing at the moment is it's using the ingestion time. You'll see the little, uh, little triangle here so it's defaulting to a, a mod time rather than actually using the T field which is in the data here. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach Splunk that that's the timestamp we want it to use and not generate its own. So you see on the end uh, in within uh, quotes is T colon and then the actual value. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say to Splunk to do some advanced timestamp recognition. So we're going to choose the timestamp format, the timestamp prefix which is the quotes with a T and a colon we're going to um, tell it not to look too far ahead of that as well so we can make it nice and efficient and have a short time period. The format of the timestamp is epoch so those digits, those 10 digits there are epoch which is a percent %s so we're going to tell Splunk that it's the percent %s format so you'll see now it'll update and those timestamps have updated to match um, when they came in an epoch time so we're going to save that now and Splunk will uh, use that use that field for all of the timestamp recognition going forward. So whenever it touches uh, touches the API and pulls the event back, then you'll show you that as the time timestamp. We do some validation now for Splunk Base. So if you're building an internal app, obviously this isn't mandatory. But if you wanted to share this with uh, the wider public or open source your app then you can use this to validate them. So uh, what this does is this sends a copy um, up to Splunk Base. What it will do there is it will run it um, to validate the the format, make sure all the fields that are there and all the all the configuration files are there that you need. I'm just going to log in with my username and password, just check the connection. And then we can return to the validation now. So what it's going to do is this, this will be um, sent up to say Splunk Base, they'll run some tests, do some validation and checks, 
and then from there they'll give you a rating here. So based on what's happening, there's some local validation first. What's happening here is it's reading through the config files, checking you know, the timestamp format that we told it to use, checking the field mappings we told it to use, and working its way right the way across there. So we've got green across the board. Once the validation is complete, you can download the package by clicking on the top right there, download package, and what that does is that downloads the app to your local machine, and then you can take it from there, and install it into another Splunk, and we'll also share it up into Splunkbase for other users to use. It appears normally within one to two days in Splunkbase. Hope you learned something today, and good luck creating your own add-ons.